Okay, so I'm getting ready to start the second section on Adam's dream coat. So on, on showing on my original sweater, this is the one that we just did. And I'll even put it over on top of it so you can see. You can see his version is much darker than my original one. So much more moody colors. Okay, so we have that there. We've got the top piece up here, which is where we ended that. And now what we're going to do is pick up along this side right here. And we're going to do this fading marled seed stitch for a while. Now, seed stitch looks really cool. It presents really cool. It is a giant pain in the ass to do. It is one of my least favorite stitches to actually do, but it looks really, really cool. So what we're going to be doing is a fading marl, which basically means we're going to start with um, with some colors and then just uh, in, in this one, what we did was we used one of the same colors all the way through. We're using two strands of yarn again, and we used one that was the same and just switched one of the strands. In this one, we're going to be switching the different strands throughout so we get a little bit more of a fading texture and I'm going to show you how that works once we get into it. Now on this one you guys also voted because I want to put a big Technicolor splash in the middle of it just like I have with the red here and I had you guys vote on which color it was so ta-da! Here is what you guys selected. You guys really liked this Technicolor green and so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a darker color and kind of fade up towards our Technicolor green for that nice big splash. And then I think I'm going to put another one in there too, but I'm going to keep that one a surprise. So you're not going to see it until it's done. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is pick up stitches along the side. And we're going to pick up three stitches one stitch for each yarn over hole, and then we're going to make one. So we've got our first stitch picked up. One, two, three, and then we do a backwards loop cast on, make one. And we're going to do that 16 more times. One, two, Seventeen. All right, so that helps us to work this side of the fabric. We've got all our stitches picked up. 
So now we can go in a completely different direction than we were going before. Now we're going to turn it around and we're going to start our awful seed stitch that I hate doing. But I'm going to do it because, because I'm crazy enough to make this sweater again and it does look really cool. But it takes flipping forever and I'm going to show you why the stitch takes flipping forever. So I'm just going to get my stitches all ready to go. Now we're going to be doing this on the wrong side row. The first thing we're going to do is knit this first stitch. Actually, was I supposed to make one at the end? I think I was supposed to make another one at the end. I think I was. I don't think... Oh, I didn't. I did make one at the end. I'm way ahead of myself. All right. So we knit, knitted that first one that I made. And now we're going to knit two together and now we start our seed stitch which is going to be that we knit one we bring the yarn in front and we purl one and then we bring the yarn back and we knit one and we purl one so if you're just getting started with knitting or if you know nothing about knitting this is a good opportunity to learn the two main stitches knit and Pearl. But it's a pain in the butt. It's not hard. It's just a pain in the butt. You have to keep bringing the yarn from the back for the knit stitch to the front for the purl stitch. Then we go for the knit stitch. Then you bring it to the front for the purl stitch. Blada, blada, blada. Ad nauseum over and over and over again. Purl. Knit. Pearl. Always got to make sure we're getting both strands because we're holding two strands for marling. Knit. Pearl. Knit. Pearl. You know what? I screwed up. I don't think I was supposed to have that original knit stitch at the, or the, the make stitch at the at the end there. Oh wait, did I screw up? No, I didn't screw up. False alarm. I did not screw up. Pearl. Knit. Pearl. Excellent. I love it when I think I screw up and I actually don't. And then the last stitch we're gonna slip. The slip stitch is, is what's gonna create the salvage stitch on the edge that we'll use to pick up later. And now we're just going to keep going back and forth and alternating knit and purl, knit and purl, and I'm going to be switching out one strand of the yarn at a time to create a nice fade effect. Now, you'll notice I'm actually only using one ball of yarn, but I'm using two strands from that ball of yarn to get started with. And I sometimes do this when I'm doing fading marls, is I'll just use two strands from the same yarn, one from the um, the, the inside, like the one that I start the winding with and one from the outside, because that'll have more intensity with that color. This is called eel. This is one of my favorite colors, actually one of my favorite darker ones. And so we're going to start with eel. I want it to be nice and dark at the beginning because we're going to be fading into a big green technicolor splash and some other surprises too. So I will update you on my progress as I make my way through it. 
Okay, so I want to provide a little update on how section two of Adam's Technicolor Dreamcoat is going, and I'm actually pretty impressed with it so far. So I'm about 80 rows into it. I have about 40 more rows left to go, and here is what the fabric is looking like so far. So you can already tell the stripe that I had all you guys vote on which color you wanted this big Technicolor stripe to be is green. This green one out. I was actually pretty happy with that because I really do love this green and I don't actually use it that much because it's it's a really difficult color to match with other colors for some reason. So I love the way this is turning out though. I'm really really impressed with it. So you can see for this one I started out with real at first we picked up stitches along the edge of section one and then I just started out with a really really dark color and how this fade works is basically you swap out one strand of yarn you're always holding two together but you swap out swap out one for another as you work your way up the fabric so you can see I started out with this black and then I added in this this kind of um it's kind of, kind of almost like a uh, sunsetty color where it has purples and pinks and oranges and yellows and all this stuff and then I swapped in a blue and then I was knitting with a couple of blue strands for a little while and then I swapped in a lighter blue and then we got to this big green Technicolor stripe and I went went to town with that for a little while now what I want this to look like is I want it to look like a big old thing of paint just got thrown across this fabric so it's a little it's not perfect and it like mixes with the other colors and it just looks like it appears out of nowhere in the middle of the fade so I feel like I did a pretty good job on this one I'm actually really really happy with the way it turned out and then we did our big stripe and then I basically faded back in the other direction so we faded back to our darker fabric now I have about 30 more rows that I need to do of this section and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another smaller stripe. So what I have right now is I'm using this awesome iridescent purple. I love this purple. This is actually Madeline Tosh. This is not, this is one of the few yarns in this that's not going to be Hedgehog Fibers. This is Madeline Tosh, but Hedgehog Fibers has a very similar one called Spell, but where I usually get my yarn from was just sold out of it. So I went with that one instead. And the stripe that we're going to be doing for the smaller one is boom. This yellow, this nice citrusy yellow. It's kind of got some, this, this one's got some lime green in it too. So I think that this is going to look really, really good, especially when we start contrasting it with the purple and fading it into and out of the purple. We're going to go to this one first because this has some darker tones to it. And I'm going to do a couple rows with this one and then fade back out into black again. Now, I thought about doing pink because the pink color was actually the second highest vote getter for the Technicolor Stripe voting contest. So I thought about doing that one, but honestly, the way the fabric is shaping up, I, I just think the yellow is going to go better with it, and I think it goes better with this green, and I think it's just going to look a little bit more cohesive with yellow, and a lot of people voted for yellow too, so I'm going to take some liberties with that. So I'm at the point now where I need to start adding this one right here, so I'm going to add it in so you guys can see that, and then I'm going to knit for a little while and so you guys can see it kind of come together. All right, first thing we need to do, this is the most critical part, we need to find the end of the damn yarn. That's critical. Okay, there we go. Put that down there. Now to add the yarn in, what I want to do is, at first I want to find the end of the last yarn that I already broke. And what I want to do is find, oh, dropped my yarn. I want to get a little bit of a tail that is about the same length. And then I have my two primary strands I'm going to be working with over here. All right, so we need to get all of our stitches to the end of the needle. If you guys can tell, it's a little bit dark in my living room right now because my husband is sleeping on the couch. It is not out of the question that we might hear him snoring in this video, but that's okay. It's the day after Christmas. He is allowed to take a little bit of a break. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is do our knit front back, which is the start of every row on the right side. So we're going to knit into the front of the loop. And now I'm going to, because again, I'm lazy, I don't like weaving in ends, I'm going to add the other two, the tails of those two yarns 
basically into it. And we're just going to knit them together with these because you can't really tell in the course of the fabric. So we've knit into the front of the loop. Now we need to knit into the back of the loop because that helps us to create two stitches out of one, which is how we shape the fabric. We're going to be knitting together stitches at the end. So how you get the fabric to go, you guys can't really tell, but it is going in a little bit. It's looking a little bit like a parallelogram, like the last fabric we did. So how we do that is we add a stitch at the beginning and we take away a stitch at the end. So the total number of stitches stays the same throughout. It's just we're adding one at the beginning, taking one away from the end, and that's how you get that kind of weird parallelogram shape to the fabric. So we've done that now. And now we have to go into our, our seed stitch. Now seed stitch is basically, again, it is just purling one, knitting one, purling one, knitting one, purling one, knitting one. But you also want to make sure you're doing the opposite of whatever you did on the last stitch. So this is a knit stitch right here. This is a purl stitch. So last time we had a knit stitch and a purl stitch. So now we have to go purl, then flip it back, knit. And if you don't know the two basic knitting stitches, which is knit and purl, you will, by the time you are done doing a full piece of fabric with seed stitch. I promise you that. All right. Oh, I made a mistake. Uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh-oh. So it looks like I accidentally knitted in some of one of the other colors. So we can just pull that out because, ah, there we go. All better. All right, let me see how many, and I lost my tails at some point. So, okay, we're going to assume that they're woven in. <laughs> I was so distracted talking to you guys that I lost my tails, but that's okay. Because listen, like with a lot of this stuff, it's really, oh, this one kind of got pulled through a little bit. So what we can do is just actually literally just pull that out. So hang on, we're going to go back. This is like the first mistake I've had to fix in this entire thing so far. So that's actually doing pretty good. So you can see there's the tail for one of our things. And what we want to do is just bloop, make sure it's on the back side. That's all we need to do. And it's basically going to hide itself. And you'll see, I actually have a lot of, um, you can see the tails on the back of the fabric. I'm not going to leave those like that. I'm going to snip them off later, but that's kind of like what it looks like on the back with all the leftover tails. So we don't have to worry about that right now. Right now, all we need to do is worry about pearl knit. And that's all. That's all. And let's see. Get some more slack here. Ba -do -do. And I'm just going to knit for a little while. And you guys are going to be able to watch the fabric develop in real time. Just for fun. All right. So you can see we're starting to get some of that lime green in there. So we'll do this for a little while and I will update you guys on the progress when it's done. Hi everyone. I thought I would come on live and knit a little bit of Adam's dream coat, the second section. Let's see if anyone wants to come in and chat. Oh, there go the dogs. I don't know what the fuck they're barking at, but they're barking at something. <laughs> the dogs are on a mission. And, and Victor's trying to shush them and completely ineffectively. Completely ineffectively shushing the dogs. 
This is what happens when I'm knitting in my living room. There's all sorts of chaos. Victor is putting together his Star Wars Lego thing. And I'm trying to knit. But I hope you guys had a good holiday. I hope you all got good presents. Thank you, Offensive Tranny. I appreciate that. What I'm doing right now... So here, I'll even just show you guys. I'll do a little back up. So I'll show you guys the fabric so far. This is for the second section of Adam's Dream Coat. I did the first section pretty much uh, the like on Christmas Eve and Christmas. This is the first section right here. So I think that turned out pretty good. This is obviously like a lot of the moody colors that Adam picked out are in it, but we also have some bright ones in there too. And then this is the second section and I did this all, I, I did this entirely yesterday. I basically just sat around yesterday and did like just like in knit like knitted that was all I did I did nothing yesterday except for knit and this is the second section you can see it gets that big green stripe that everyone voted on which color that was going to be and I'm really really pleased with the way this stripe turned out actually I'm really happy with it I actually think like the way that Adam chose uh, his more moody colors for this is going to be really great in terms of actually creating like a true Technicolor dream coat because it's going to make these colors seem even more brighter when you contrast them with the more moody stuff but I have about 30 more rows left to go in this section. And what I've decided to do is add another stripe. It's going to be much smaller than the green one, but it's going to be bam. It's going to be this nice, bright, bright, bright yellow. Um, I thought about doing it in pink, but um, I like because pink was actually the second highest vote getter. Uh, but I want to save the pink for something else, and I just thought that the yellow would look better, frankly, in this particular panel because it's, like, nice and citrusy. So now I'm just doing knitting the seed stitch fabric. I hate knitting seed stitch more than anything in the known universe. I hate knitting seed stitch. I don't know if there are any knitters watching right now, but if any of you like seed stitch, I just don't understand you because it is the most annoying thing in the world to actually knit. Thank you, Shelly. I like the, I really, I'm actually kind of jealous of this. I might have to make something for myself out of these similar colors because Adam's getting, Adam's getting a good sweater. I'm actually, I'm really jealous of the way this panel turned out. I'm like, I want to wear that. Uh, but we're just going to keep on knitting. No, good. Yeah, I mean, seed stitch is not fun to knit, but I love the way that seed stitch looks. I just don't like knitting it. And so um, you say that um, brioche is better. I actually like knitting brioche. I find knitting brioche to be very relaxing, to be honest. I think everyone should learn how to do brioche. We're going to be doing brioche. I don't think it's, it might be the next section. It might be, actually, I think it is the next section we're going to be doing brioche. Um... So it's either the next section or the section after. We are going to be doing brioche. Um, Ashley asks, how long does it take to knit something like this? Um, this sweater is going to take at least a month, probably closer to two months than one month. It really just depends on, um, it depends on how much I work on it, really, uh, more than anything else but this is the this particular sweater is a really big project i'm on section two right now there are 13 different sections and that does not count the cuffs or all of the i-cord border that i'm going to do um if you guys hear noise in the background my husband is literally getting his legos out to play oh yeah he, he's, he's trying to make not make noise but um, he's getting his Legos out to play. I bought him a really big Star Wars Legos project that he is working on on the couch right beside me. So that might be the noise that we might be hearing in the background. Linen stitch is quite annoying as well. Yeah, I mean, it looks so good though. I, I genuinely do love the way that seed stitch looks when it's done. I just hate doing it. Um, offensive training us. Did you have a nice Christmas? I had a great Christmas. We didn't do shit. We didn't do anything. We sat around literally all day. I didn't do anything. I'm I'm strongly considering having another day of sitting around doing nothing today, but I actually do have work I need to do. Um, I need to finish up my book proposal, and I need to... 
I want to try to do a video. Like, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. But I gotta, I gotta be honest with you guys, like, not doing a... Yesterday was probably the first day that I have not worked since June. Literally since June. And, um, where I just did nothing. Like, there are days that I have lazier days. Um, especially days, like, if I'm, if I'm flying or something like that. Like, you, there's not really... I don't really do much when I'm flying. But, um, it was really, really nice to not do shit for an entire day. Oh. But I hope you guys had good Christmases. I hope you guys got good presents. Victor got me a remote car starter, which I'm pretty excited about. I've wanted a remote car starter for a long time. I was like, I'm thinking about getting a new car. I'm like, I'm not sure if we're going to need this. But he assures me that the remote car starter can be transferred into a new car, should I decide to get a new car. But that's going to be his thing to figure out. Alright, so we start the row by doing knit front knit back, and then we go into our seed stitch. Thank you, offensive trainee. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like, I don't really feel like the work I do is that hard right now. I definitely, you know, the thing of it is, is like, I felt like, you know, I still do, um, like coaching and like a tr a trainings here and there for organizations. And I always felt like the consulting work I was doing is significantly harder than what I'm than what I'm doing now. I can't really do consulting now because they're it's so easy for um for those little socialist fuckers on the internet to cancel me that it just it made more sense for me to kind of like not do as much consulting work right now and just focus on the the content stuff instead. Um and it's actually kind of a really nice break because I kind of hate consulting. Um but that was much harder work. It was much harder work than what I'm doing now. Um, but the thing of it is, is, like, the stuff I'm doing now just takes more time. So I end up working more hours now. Um, I don't think the work is harder, but I end up working, I'm ending up working, like, a lot more. Uh, so I'm working, I've been working, like, pretty much, I mean, usually when I'm home, it's rare for me to work less than 12 hours in a day when I'm home. So it was nice to have a little bit of a break. And I need to start getting into a more routine schedule with the work, too. But I like what I'm doing now. I like, I really do like not, because like the thing about consulting is that I always thought, um, Victor, you look so attentive. Victor hasn't even had coffee yet. And he's like, <laughs> um, like I always thought when I worked for a business, I was like, they always listen to the consultants. They don't listen to the employees. No, businesses don't listen to consultants either. <laughs> They just, they pay them more money than <laughs> not to listen to them. Um, I knit left-handed. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I do English style knitting. I tried learning, um, there was a brief period of time when I tried to learn, what is the other one? Continental. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't, I, I just didn't like the feel of it. There's something I find really relaxing about, uh, about throwing. So I went, I also tried to do Portuguese style knitting too for a while where I was, oh, I just hit my camera where I, um, in Portuguese style knitting, you actually have the yarn wrapped around the back of your neck and you, and you, um, you flick it with your thumb. So you have your thumb like this and you flick the yarn like this with the yarn wrapped around the back of your neck. And I actually did that for a while and I liked that, but, oh, <coughs> hang on. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I really liked Portuguese style knitting, but I can knit faster as an as a English knitter, to be honest, so I stopped doing it. <laughs> Ashley says, husband doing Legos while I knit is couples goals. I guess so. I guess so. So how many knitters do I have watching right now? I'm just curious. Any other knitters, or do I have purely the novices? Because if I have if I have novices watching, if you guys want me to explain what I'm doing, I'm happy to. But if I have knitters watching, they know exactly what I'm doing. Because <laughs> I'm doing the most two boring stitches in the world. Knit. Pearl. Ah, Carissa's here. Thank you. 
Yeah, this is going to be a good stripe, I think, because I really like, I like the contrast of um, this kind of, like, iridescent purple with this kind of, like, limey highlighter yellow. Got some crocheters. Is anyone doing um, the West Knits Hiber Knitting uh, MCAL? Because I just watched, I watched his video on that this morning. I was, I'm not going to do it. Because obviously I'm working on like 87 other projects right now. And like the last thing I need is another, like, <laughs> another shawl to cast on. But I did like, um, and, 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 and I think the, the West Knits mystery knit along honestly traumatized me in terms of the Chevron stuff, the Chevron border. Um, that took forever and a flipping day to complete. And then he did a whole shawl of Chevrons. I was like, I can't do it. I'm not, I, I think it looks really cool. I'm just like, I'm not in the mental headspace to do a whole shawl of chevrons after it took me like three weeks just to knit that damn chevron border. Uh. Seed stitch sucks. It sucks so bad. But it looks really cool. Oh, shit. I screwed up. Oh, no. I screwed up. This is what happens when I'm screwing around on the internet instead of ta and talking to you guys instead of paying attention to what I'm doing. Now I've got to nip back and figure out where I screwed up exactly. It's probably at the very beginning. But thank God I caught it relatively early on. Um, what pattern am I making or is this your own design? No, this is not my own design. I am making a Westnitz Marled Mania sweater and I'm doing this for Adam Krigler who saw my version of it and said, I want my own Technicolor dream coat and I hemmed and hawed about it for a little while and then I just decided, you know what? Let's make Adam a Technicolor dream coat. Okay, there's where I screwed up. Now I can start again. And the way I know I screwed up is because when you're doing seed stitch... Did I screw up there, too? Hang on a second. Did I screw up there? Huh. Well, that's going to be pretty unnoticeable if I screwed up there. When you're doing seed stitch, you need to make sure that you're, um, you're doing the opposite of whatever stitch you did on the last one. So this is a knit stitch, so we need to purl into it. This is a purl, so we need to knit into it. I feel like I screwed up. Did I screw up? Hang on. I have to make sure. No, I don't think I did. I think I'm just being paranoid. Um, I keep calling it Merled... I keep calling it Merled Magic. Yeah, he's got Merled Magic and Merled Mania. Um, I actually love his Merled Magic sweater. I actually started that a while ago and I never finished one. I started that the Merled Magic sweater when I was really no, I it was like a begin I was I wasn't really a beginner I'd been knitting for a long time but I hadn't done a lot of his type of stuff before um, and so I do want to make one for myself at some point but I need to go back and do it again. Oh. Do, do, do. You guys should see this thing that Victor's making. It's it's a huge fucking Lego thing. I have no idea where we're going to put it. He's going to have to clear off a shelf or something. Or probably a table. This is like a coffee table display Legos. It's almost four feet long. Yeah, Victor says it's almost four feet long. Victor, what ship is it? What are you making? It's, uh... Start, um... Destroyer? Some Star Wars destroyer. I have no idea what that means. Actually. Uh, the Imperial Class Devastator. The Imperial Class Devastator is what Victor is making for Legos. <laughs> All right. All right, how are you guys doing? How's your holiday been? How's your weekend going? Have any SJWs been creating nonsense in the knitting world lately that I just haven't seen because I haven't really been paying attention? 
I was on a call the other day. I was on a call the other day with um, these people that are going to be starting an organization um, that's kind of like the ACLU. It went back when the ACLU actually did the ACLU things and they were they they even realized that they they knew about the stuff in the knitting community which i thought was pretty funny um what did you and what what did your husband end up getting you wait what did i end up getting my husband for christmas i got him this legos thing that he is putting together now this big legos star wars project with like 5000 pieces so keep him busy for a little while i also got him a cigar humidor they got stolen off our front porch, and so they have to send a replacement one. It was like thieving bastards stealing packages at Christmas. I don't know, knit, but watching your hands is mesmerizing. <laughs> well, it's usually a lot more interesting than this, to be honest. It's usually a lot more interesting than this, um, but seed stitch doesn't really allow you to go, or at least doesn't allow me to go very fast. Maybe if I was like... I don't know if this would be better if I was a continental knitter. Like, purling with, with being a continental knitter is my impression of it. It's kind of, like, awkward. Um, but I am totally fine with not being a continental knitter. Because I knit actually pretty fast as an English knitter. But, but not when I'm doing seed stitch. Just the worst stitch. Even worse than brioche, because I actually like brioche. Okay, so we are actually at the end of one of our sections, so I need to just make a note. Oh, hit my camera. Remind myself how much I've done. Now, let's take a look at what we have. So we're going to be, what I'm doing right now is I'm fading from this dark into a smaller um, stripe. So let me just count real quick. One two, three, hmm, what do you guys think, should I do three, four, five, should I do another section to add, or at least maybe one more row to add a little bit more fade to this before I transition, I kind of feel like I should, I kind of feel like I should do one more row of this particular combination of this and this. We'll do one more row of that and then we'll add this. Because I think that fades just look a little bit better when you have... I think more is usually better when it comes to doing fades. Like more combinations of them. Um... So I was thinking about switching to Continental, but English works so well for me. I found when I was trying to learn Continental that it just, I liked, I like the act of actually tossing. I do. I like the act of, I think that's actually why I like brioche as well, um, is I like the act of tossing. So I find it to be comforting. I find it to be relaxing for some reason. So that's why I gave up on learning Continental. Also, I mean, it was just like, I found it just to be... I did not like the way it felt to do everything with my left hand. I didn't. I felt like I couldn't maintain tension in the yarn. Um, and I'm sure that's a skill that you learn, like you, I mean, like anything else. But I just did not like it. And then everyone kept telling me, they were like, well, Carlin, if you just knit a whole thing continental, you'll learn how to do it in no time. Well, I just don't like it, though, so. <laughs> um, the Daily Stitcher asks, what is the techno difference between Continental? So what I'm doing right now with holding the yarn in my right hand and um, kind of guiding at least uh, this needle with my left hand, this is English style knitting. If I was Continental style knitting, I would be holding the yarn in my left hand and actually, can I do it? Hang on. Is that a... Okay, I don't know how to do... I think purling with this is like... you It's picking. Oh, did I just do that correctly? So then I would do... Because this is like a knit stitch. So I'd do this and pick the yarn that way and pull it off the needle that way. So that's continental. I'm fairly certain I just did actually that correctly. So I'm actually pretty pleased with myself since I have not even attempted continental knitting in over a year. <laughs> At least over a year. Maybe even two years. 
So, but that's the difference. It's just, it's, it's what hand you hold the yarn with. If you're an English knitter, you hold it with your right hand. If you're a continental knitter, you hold it with your left hand. If you're a, a Portuguese or a Peruvian knitter, you wrap it around your neck and then you guide it with your thumb, which is kind of fun, actually. So if I was a Peruvian knitter, I would do that. Boop. Actually, I wouldn't have done that because that shouldn't have been a pearl. That should have been a knit. <laughs> so you have to take that off and do it the correct way. I think Peruvian knitting looks really fun, though. I mean, I, I think it looks interesting, and I did it for a while, but I just, I, I, I'm much faster with English knitting, so I quit. Oh, I do both continental and English. I switch it up when when my hands get sore. You know, I mean, I've actually heard people say, especially people that um have like issues with carpal tunnel, that Peruvian knitting actually or Portuguese style knitting um actually really helps them. Uh and because it's really like with Portuguese knitting, basically all you're doing, like the only motion really is you're flicking with your thumb. That's it. That's the only motion. So I've heard a lot of people say that that actually helps them. I saw someone put a needle between her legs and knit off that. Yeah, so what she's doing is so a lot, sometimes the speed knitters um, is like what they basically do is they, they, they want to do this needle stationary and then they just guide it. I kind of do that, but I let go of it because what happens is like the fabric actually holds it up. You can actually see this more when I'm doing just like a garter stitch. So you can see there, I, I've completely let go of the needle and it's holding it up. And then I just use my hands to guide it. And what that helps you do is knit much faster. Um, there's also uh, some knitters where like the woman who has the world record. Guys, if you want to have some fun today, Google the um, the world's fastest knitter women because they're absolutely insane. But one of them wears actually, a, like, she uses like just really long straight needles and she hooks one into a knitting belt. So it's like it's hooked into the belt and it just stays up like that. And then she just guides the needle. And that actually helps people that are to knit really, really, really fast. But I basically do the same thing. You see, I, I completely let go of my right hand needle when I'm knitting. Because the fabric will hold it up. And that's part of how I can knit really fast as an English knitter is I just let go of it. Um, I think you need to think a few back. I don't know what that means. I think I did screw up. Oh, well. If I screwed up, I'm going to be so mad at myself. It looks fine, though. It looks fine. So, yeah, so this is the Merled Magic Sweater and Dress by Westnitz. Um, I'm going to be documenting my creation of this project. This is not for me. This is for, I'm knitting this for Adam Krigler um, because he's a good dude and he asked me to and I thought it would be fun to knit a gift for him. And I'm going to be documenting the progress on this using the hashtag Adam's Dream Coat. And I'm documenting it on here. I'm documenting it on Twitter. I'm going to be posting some stuff on my YouTube. I'm going to be uh, on and on Parlor as well. I'm going to be asking people to vote for colors for different sections of it. So if you just joined, I actually had people vote yesterday on what color to make this stripe. And people voted green because we're doing a Technicolor sweater. So it's going to be lots. There's going to be bright colors, but there's also going to be... Um, some darker moody colors as well, which of course is going to... A mistake just adds character. Exactly. 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 If I made a mistake, I'll go back and fix it. It's really not that big of a deal, but... This actually really would not be a hard fabric to fix a mistake with, I don't think. Okay, this is going to be my last row for this, and then I'm going to switch to something. Then I'm going to... We're going to add that bright yellow stripe, and we're going to see how it goes. All right, so how you start the wrong side is you knit the first stitch, and then you knit the first two together. Then we do a purl. And go back into our seed stitch. 
My dog is muttering at something. Oh, there goes the bark. There it goes. Must be a neighbor. Or alternatively, a ghost. I hate mistakes in my knitting. I mean, the the good thing about... Oh my god, that bug, The dog. Oh. Victor, just pick the dog up and bring her in here. Colby, don't you start. The other dog is sitting next to me on the couch, and he doesn't even know what he's upset about, but he starts barking when the other one barks. Just for good measure, but he seems to not be motivated enough to jump off the couch. Here comes Honey. Here she comes. Fresh from bad dog behavior. Honey, hang your head in shame. Honey, you want to come to the camera? You want to come over here? Honey's like, no. Leave me alone. Honey, you want to be famous on the internet for 13 people? <laughs> yeah, I mean, mistakes in knitting usually aren't that big of a deal. And there she goes, off the couch. To go back and... Oh, there she goes, attacking the mailman. Um, and on this one, it would, it would actually be pretty easy to fix. So... And on this sweater, too, the good thing about knitting complex sweaters with lots of color in them is that, like, you don't really notice in the grand scheme of things if there's a mistake. You can fudge your way through it for the most part. Gloria, I'm knitting an entrelock uh, baby blanket. Oh, God. I have been knitting. I believe it's called Norwegian knitting, so I don't have to turn my work. Huh. I've never heard of that. Oh, see, I did make a mistake here. I messed up on, see what I did is I didn't knit both stitches at the same time. So now we have to get this little fucker to come through. Bloop! And now we can knit it. See, no big deal. Yeah, my dog barks at everything too. My dog's a little bastard. And then on occasion, like, so they always bark when we're getting food delivered. But occasionally the food delivery man drops our food off and the dog doesn't even notice. And I'm like, you had one job. Your only job was to alert us if there was an intruder coming to the house and you failed in your job. And then she hangs her head in shame and requests a bone or something. Um, do The more pattern, the more it hides your sins. That is exactly correct. That is exactly correct. Well, and what I like about this stuff too, and especially, I mean, this this project from um, Westnitz is a really good one if you want to learn how to be a lot less uptight about your knitting because um, you can experiment and you can play with the different colors and the designs and there's a lot of improvisation to it and... You know, I mean, I think that this was actually the first project that I knitted for myself um, a couple of years ago after I took a class with him at Vogue Knitting Live. And I'm really glad I did because it made knitting much more fun. So, all right, guys, we we'll have a couple more stitches that we're going to be switching over to that big, bold yarn. And it's going to be really cool to see what that looks like. All right. All right. Boom. All right. And we always slip the last stitch because we want to have our salvage edge. Because that's going to make it much easier for later. What was the brand of yarn you mentioned before? Looks expensive. Yeah, dude. All this yarn is very expensive. Um, So most of the yarn that I have in here is Hedgehog Fibers. Probably like 80 85% of the yarn in this sweater is going to be hedgehog fibers just because I like them. I like their colors. And I also think I'm, I'm a little anal in this regard in that I think that when you're doing um, stuff that's supposed to, that's marled or faded or things like that, I think it's usually better to get yarn from the same dyer because the colors are much more similar and I find that they, they speak to each other a lot more than if you're trying to mix different, um, different dyers together. That's not to say different dyers can't work. I just find it to be better to do it this way. All right, so now we need to switch out our yarn. 
And the one we're going to be letting go of, how you do a marl fade is you switch one, you're always holding two strands together. So you got our two strands together and you just switch one of them at a time when you're ready to fade it into a different color. So what we're going to do is we're going to break their purple. Boop. And we are going to attach, bam, highlighter yellow. This is UFO from Hedgehog Fibers. Um, and so, um, yeah, I said these are these are expensive yarns. All of these, like the yarns that I use, you're not going to find these yarns in like Michael's or Joanne's Fabrics or stuff like that. Not that there's anything wrong with those yarns necessarily. Like, I mean, I don't, I, 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 I'm not a snob about this stuff. Like use whatever yarns you want. But um, usually those yarns are going to be synthetic. Whereas I like to use, these are, these are merino wool. And so I like that. Um, I also, uh, these are also hand dyed yarns um, in like small batches. Um, and so they tend to be about $30 for one of these. But the, re but the thing is like, you know, like over time when you're doing this sort of stuff, you develop your stash of yarns in which you hide from your husband how much money you spend on yarns that you intend to use later. And you develop a huge collection over time. So usually like you can just go into your stash and find stuff. Cause like all the yarns I'm using, like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use this whole skein of yarn in this project. Probably. I mean maybe I will, but like that's not the plan. I'm gonna use some of this, then I'm gonna use some of it for another project, you know? So it's not like that. What would be a good first project for okay, what would be a good first project for what type of knitter daily stitcher? Because if it's someone who is just just starting out knitting, this is not the project for you. <laughs> I think a, a dishcloth is a great first project. Yeah, I mean, a dishcloth, I would do a scarf, probably. A scarf is a really good first project. Great idea about the dishcloth. I would do a scarf because I think that there's something about um, wearing something that you've made rather than using it to clean your dishes, you know? All right, so we're starting in our new yarns now. I am lazy with weaving in ends. So what we're going to do is we're going to just hold the yarn together um, and weave in the ends that way. Um, and it's going to be a little thicker in this section, but that's okay because you're not really going to be able to tell. So where I'm actually holding four strands of yarn right now, and we're just going to do like six to eight stitches with four strands of yarn or however long the tails allow me to go. Yeah, that's correct. Let's see. That's that's good enough. Okay, so now I've, I've done enough. So we're going to drop our tails of yarn. And we just have our two bright yellow yarns. Yeah, I would I would just go and find... So, so basically, if you're a beginner... If you're a beginner knitter... Um, there are two stitches you need to know, and I'll show you them right now because it's all I'm knitting for this damn seed stitch fabric. You need to know, actually let's do, let's start with the knit stitch because that's a very good place to start. For the knit stitch, you want your yarn in the back and you're going to go into the front of the yarn, of the, of the hook right here, bloop, wrap the yarn around, pull it through. That's your knit stitch. For purl stitch, you have your yarn in front, you go into the front of the yarn, of the of the um, loop and pull your yarn through so if you know knit stitch and purl stitch you can knit a scarf if you know those two stitches you can knit a scarf <laughs> and you know I mean you can knit a scarf you can use it all you can do the whole scarf and knit stitch you can do the whole scarf and purl stitch my battery is running low, so just pause me for a second. So you can do a whole scarf and knit stitch. You can do a whole scarf and purl stitch. Or you can do a scarf where one side is knit stitch and one side is purl stitch. And that's going to give you a stockinette stitch um, so that one side of the fabric will look different than the other side. But that would be what I would start. It's just like, because what you want to do when you're starting knitting is just, um, you just want to get used to, 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 the motions and you just want to get used to you're trying to develop muscle memory essentially on how to do the different stitches 
Like, I'm not even looking at my needles right now. I know it may seem like I am because I'm holding them in front of the camera. I'm not even looking at the needles right now specifically because I've developed the muscle memory to know exactly how to do the stitches and exactly what that feels like. Um, and sometimes that gets me into trouble if I make a mistake, but, you know. Oh, someone said they left for a second and now they can't hear me. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. Uh, oh, someone asked a question. Um, they asked, when did you first start knitting? Okay, that's a good question. Hang on. Bloop. Um, I first started knitting. Um, oh, God. Probably about 15 years ago. Oh, good. Shelly says you can hear me. Good. Um, yeah, so I first started knitting about 15 years ago. I just and I, and my first project was actually it was literally a scarf. Um, I basically got a, a a knitting kit like a beginner's knitter kit at like Joanne's Fabrics or something, and it was a scarf. And um, so I made a scarf. It was knit stitch on one side. It was purl stitch on the other side, and that was my first project. And the scarf kind of sucked, but that's what happens with your first project because the only way to get better at knitting is to knit. That is the only way to get better is to knit and to practice and to knit a lot more and to practice a lot more. And there's no way to fake getting better at knitting. You just need to knit. And you'll knit a lot of projects that suck and you'll knit some that are pretty good. And over time you get better. But I I, I didn't knit for 15 years straight. Like I um I did uh like it was like off and on. I do I, I did like a lot of other crafts. Like I made jewelry and I um, paint sometimes and like other stuff like that. So I, there was a lot of years that I really wasn't knitting. And then, um, probably about, oh, I don't know, three, four years ago now, I discovered really expensive, beautiful hand painted dyed yarn. And I kind of became obsessed with it. And I started knitting all the time because I had to do something with the yarn and so here I am, still knitting. Yeah, look up how to do a long tail cast on. Yes, long tail cast on is critical to your toolbox. But even if you don't know how to do a long tail cast on, like long tail cast on is a little bit complicated for people who are totally beginner knitters, but you can just do like that can be your cast on, like a backwards loop cast on. If you're just learning how to knit, that's all you need to do. Make a little loop. Bam. That's all you need to do. Doesn't need to be complicated. You're just learning how to do it. All right. So we knit our first stitch and then we knit two together. See, because once you know how to do knit and purl, like most of the stuff you'll learn is like, Okay, now you knit two stitches together. Well, guess what? If you know how to knit already, you know how to knit two stitches together. Done. Oh, but then our next stitch is knit. Okay. Or you purl two together. Or you knit through the back loop as opposed to the front loop, which I'll show you actually at the beginning of this row because I have to do a knit front back. Or you purl through the back loop instead of the front. And purl through back loop is a pain in the ass, but it's not... None of this stuff is hard. Brioche is a little complicated. We're going to do brioche in one of the upcoming sections. Um, I had to practice a lot with brioche when I first started it. Um, my first brioche project is like, I the, the reason I learned how to brioche was because I wanted to knit the What the Fade shawl. And it has brioche at the very beginning of it. And so I had to learn how to do brioche for that. And I sucked at first. And I made a lot of mistakes. Um, but once you learn how to do brioche, it's really, like, it's, it's easy. Um, Shelly asked, do I crochet as well? F, no. I have no idea how crochet works. I actually, I tried to learn crochet at one time, but, um, I just sucked at it. I sucked real, real bad, so. Uh, I knit and take a walk at the same time. I, oh, I can't, I, I have... I was actually, I knit, <laughs> I sometimes knit standing up when I'm standing in line, but I can't walk and knit. There are actually, there are races where women will, like, speed walk and knit at the same time. There are, like, official sporting events that do that, 
which is kind of funny, but I can't do that. I mean, I can. I just don't like it. I don't like knitting standing up. Do, do, do. All right. Ooh, I can already tell I'm going to like this fade. It's going to be very good. What's going on? We're knitting. We're doing some knitting. That's all I'm doing. I'm knitting and talking and reading your chats. And having... Isn't this... Doesn't this day have, like, an official name in the UK, Victor? It's like Boxing Day or something. No idea. Didn't you live in the UK? Don't you know this stuff? I did for like eight months. Oh. But that was... Long. Years ago, years well, ago. fine. My husband has just confessed to being old, essentially, is what's just happened here. Um, what am I knitting? I'm knitting the Marled Magic Sweater for Adam Krigler. If you want to follow along on the progress of my Marled Magic Sweater, um, then use the hashtag Adam's Dream Coat. Oh, hey, Phaedra. Yes, Boxing Day. I, I knew it had a name, Victor. So we're spending our boxing day sitting around knitting and my husband is putting together his Legos. Let's see if I can if I can show you guys the Legos real quick. You guys want to see the Legos? I'll show you the Legos. Whoop! So I can actually see how big it is. My husband has just woken up and this is his first project. He still looks very handsome. <laughs> so that is what my husband is working on, his Legos. Now I have to get this back in position. Okay. I still think you look handsome, Victor, even though you just woke up. <laughs> All right. Oh. oh no. Oh no, I almost screwed that up. Oh, got to get my got to get my hands in frame. Victor doesn't like being on the internet. <laughs> Victor is more private than I am. All right. So let's take a look at that. That's actually another section down. So I have to mark that down so I can be responsible. Um, okay. So I think this is going to look pretty dang good. I'm glad I added that extra, extra row of fade. And now I'm just going to keep um, going with this yellow stripe for a little while. I think it's going to look good. And then we're going to basically fade back out for the last part of it before ending the section. So that's really all I have right now because my battery is going to run out of my phone. But I'll just show you guys if you just joined. I'll show you the full progress that's been made for Adam's Dream Coat so far. So this is section one right here, which is basically a meshy section it's a it's um a steady fade so i used one strand of fabric throughout the entire thing and then just switch that second strand of yarn to get some of these stripey colors and then and you can see i still have the live stitches on it for the top right here but then we picked up stitches along the side and i started in with this seed stitch um marled fade we go through our big green stripe, and now we're going to add an extra little bonus yellow stripe before winding out the section. So I'm going to shut my camera off because I'm about to run out of battery, and I'm going to work on that for a little while. And I will po be posting the progress. So make sure you're following along on hashtag Adam's Dream Coat, and you're going to be able to see the progress. You're also going to be able to vote on different color combinations that I'm thinking about. And... Yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon. So here is the finished section two. I have to say I am really, 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 really pleased with the way this came out. In fact, I might even be getting a little bit jealous um, that Adam is getting this sweater and I don't get to keep it. But I think it looks really, really good, and... I'm glad it's done because I don't have to do any more seed stitch for a while. Yay!